All right, dudes, as you may have heard me chat about uh, the writing roundup in recent weeks, had the pleasure in the not too distant past, I think it was some months back, maybe a couple months back now, on the road in San Clemente, California, uh, knocking out a few articles, one of which you can now read in the new fall issue of Four Magazine. It's on Nation Golf. Again, if you haven't seen the article yet, um, the the fall issue of the SCGA's Four Magazine. Here to chat a little bit further about the article and some things that didn't find their way into the article. The brain trust behind San Clemente-based Nation Golf. I want to make sure I got the titles right, gents. We've got a few acronyms here. Uh, CEO Ryan Engel and CMO Adam Hawk. Got all that right, fellas? You nailed it. That's it. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Off to a good acronym start. Uh, my yeah. sources have told me that uh, since the article came out in recent weeks, that sales, apparel sales at Nation Golf have soared upwards of 30% since the article came out. Is it correct or am I just making that sound good? <laughs> well, yeah, um, we've been we've been having a great year and, and the article was a, um, a great addition to the year we're having. Unfortunately, uh, we finally got caught by the um, good sales projections meets the supply chain uh, issue. Um, but that being said, we're really excited. We have a, a long overdue um, a fall holiday drop coming as we speak. And, uh, you know, it would have been nice to have that land right when your uh, wonderful article came out about us. But uh, we're, we're a bit behind in that. But as you've heard, you know, a lot of people are going through the same growing pains. Um, but yeah, we were excited um, with how the article came out. And uh, had we had the inventory, um, we probably would have had that 30%. So, you know, I'd, I'd like to, to, to think that that would be true. All right. Adding some fact to my fiction. For those of you not <laughs> watching the uh, video version of this and listening to uh, the Strictly Audio uh, podcast, uh, of course, available wherever podcasts can be found. That was the voice of the aforementioned Ryan Engel. Adam, uh, before we get to, to you entirely, let's, uh, and before we get to where Nation Golf is, and a couple things about you guys that we did have a chance to discuss in the article. Just a, a, beef, a, a brief backdrop, rather, of what was of the philosophy behind Nation Golf. Um, this is something we did have opportunity to uh, talk about. But for those who have yet to read the article, maybe one or both of you gents can kind of encapsulate the philosophy of your apparel company. Judd, first off, thanks so much for that article. We loved it. One of the coolest things now is hearing from people that we've never met who are contacting us and saying that they saw us in four magazines. So the article had a lot of reach and a lot of impact, and we really appreciate it. And it meant so much to us that we cut out your great work and framed it in our office. And we're very proud to have that up and to be a part of four magazine and to have met you. The philosophy of Nation Golf is to continue to foster what we think is lost fashion and lifestyle and etiquette and tradition that uh, populated the 50s, 60s, and 70s of golf. The way that guys carried themselves, the way that they dressed, why they played the game is very important. The camaraderie and the fellowship that they would have around golf, it wasn't so much about their score so much as it was about getting together and hanging out. That is something that Ryan's grandfather passed to him and something that Ryan for a long time by himself was passing on to this new generation. I, like so many other people, fell in love with that vision, came on board with Ryan and the philosophy now together is to continue to do that. Uh, we told you when we met you that there's no real fashion forecasting. We're not planning for seasons in advance. We're not trying to come up with what people are gonna to wanna to wear in the future. We're looking back at the guys that we have seen do it that look as good today as they did back then. It's this whole timeless feel and to really embrace the definition of the word timeless. It has no time. It's not gonna go stale. It's not gonna be hot for three months and go out. It looks good then, it looks good now. And we're just learning from and watching and emulating the best guys that ever did it and 
since no one wanted to pick up that torch and Ryan had such great exposure to it as a kid and as a young adult and now as an adult, uh, we're able to continue to bridge that gap. And right now, uh, no one else is doing it. So our philosophy is to show you something that you haven't seen in a long time and to do it while no one else is doing it. And as an extension of that ethos and that authenticity that comes with it, I can personally attest that where the gents are chatting from today, again, for those of you that aren't watching the video version of this and seeing their beautiful mustaches, I might <laughs> add, what a, what a treat to mine's, wake up mine's to. Mine's year-round. Mine's year-round. Uh, okay, so. I was going to say, Adam, I, I didn't think, last time there was maybe some other facial, it could have been a Van Dyke, I'm not sure, but now <laughs> it looks like pure mustache. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and actually I just took it down a couple of days ago with an electric trimmer, uh, much to... <laughs> The happiness of my wife and uh, the happiness of a lot of people who have seen me wear it for the last month. Uh, I was bringing something back that I had for a couple of years um, during my Jim Rome show days. People didn't like it then. Uh, they didn't like it just now. So I've gotten rid of it because we've got holiday pictures coming up and I don't want to ruin those for my family. Yeah. All right. Well, where these mustaches is, is located is the uh, exact locale. Uh almost to a T even, I think, where you're situated at your home office in San Clemente. I believe you call it the boardroom. What I can see are some of the uh, uh, the relics of uh, time and tournaments past. Uh, I love how you guys have it dressed up. You've got the faux wood paneling uh, speaking uh, to the era. You also have a lovely uh, bar for which you offered me a, a nice cocktail, had a cig. That's how we did uh, our yeah. interview. I wish almost all of my interviews could be in that kind of setting but to me it spoke to the philosophy the ethos and, and you don't just welcome in uh intrepid uh writers you also welcome in folks that want to come and pick up their apparel order correct yeah you know uh, we offer local pickup a lot of our customers take us up on that and we just try to you know extend our company motto and mission to to meet and enjoy the fellowship and um, like you were just describing our, our little board boardroom um, in our warehouse is set up so that, you know, we can have a, a customer come pick up his order, um, teach them about the history of my grandfather and the tournaments and the influence of the brand and, you know, just kind of break bread, so to speak, more like break scotch, but, um, <laughs> you know, offer them a complimentary cigar and, and a cocktail and just, you know, get back to that kind of old, old world way of thinking where, you know, um, even though it could be uncomfortable to tuck your shirt in and, and sit down and cross your legs, it's kind of like a, a, a nice show of respect. Um, so to just to sit down and, and really let go of all of your uh, um, bullshit <laughs> that you're holding on for the day and, and cut loose and get to know someone and, and share a moment with them, you know, in, in this, in this wild world we live in now where everything's just so fast paced and high tech. And it's like, you know, it's, it, it, there's something about the crack, and, and, and sound of an old record, you know, and, and uh, I think slowing things down and, and bringing our customers and our fans and our, our, our people back to those analog feels is, is really what keeps us going and inspires us. And, and you can just see it, the, the, our customers love that. Um, and, you know, like you were saying so well, uh, just ahead of this Judd is, is, you can't really do something like this without being authentic, you know, and, and it's not like we wake up every morning thinking about how to be more authentic. We truly are passionate about everything we, we eat, breathe and sleep at, at nation golf. And, and we're just fortunate that we're able to, to look to the blueprint of the greats ahead of us that, that drive us in the direction we go today. So um, we love it. And uh, we hope that the people that get a taste of it, love it too. Yeah. And Judd, we would, be hypocrites if we invited people to come down and pick up their order and we didn't also invite them to sit down and have a drink and have a cigar we want them to have an experience when they come here because like i told you when we did the magazine interview it's less of selling shirts and more of just kind of building out this lifestyle and part of the lifestyle like ryan mentioned is to sit down enjoy the fellowship get to know each other uh, even if you know more often than not we don't know the person coming in and so the first thing we ask them is what do you want to drink? Where do you play golf? Where are you from? Who got you into it? And then just those few simple questions spark usually a 20 to 30 minute conversation. And they leave having a really good time and a good experience. 
And none of it feels like work to us. It just feels like hanging out with a new friend. And, you know, if they're going to spend their money on us and they're going to take the trip down here, we want to make it memorable for them. And as to my own interpersonal experience, and we do so much ordering and I'd be a hypocrite to say I don't online and that's easy and that's convenient. And, you know, dudes, when I went to do my interview, pardon me, with you in person, uh, as you might remember, I was coming from a different assignment. It was kind of a a rainy day in Southern California, um, kind of tied one on a tiny bit the night before. And I just anticipated I was going to come in, bang it out in like 15, 20 minutes. And then I was going to make my way back here to the uh, Palm Springs desert. But once I sat down, you guys had the music going, made me feel nice and comfortable with the cocktail. And, and I, I stayed longer Pleasantly so than I anticipated that I would. Is that an atypical experience from those that walk in your doors? Yeah, you know, it, it is. And um, probably the, the, to the detriment of our um, Wives. marriages, uh, <laughs> you know, we, we've, we've really incorporated that in our beliefs here as, as a brand and a company and, and just day-to-day -day business. And, you know, um, I... I just relish in the fact that we're able to share those moments with, with everyone, friends, new friends, customers alike. And uh, like I said before, it's just to, to have an opportunity to slow things down and, and, and really, you know, paint the picture of what we think is being kind of lost in, in society and, and being a man, quite frankly, you know, and, and celebrating each other and, and the camaraderie and the fellowship. And um, so Gosh, I, I don't even know. I think you stayed for a couple hours. I want to yeah. say you know, it was I mean, well over an hour. Yeah, yeah, you know, and 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 that's that is that is pretty pretty typical. You know, it, it's it's something that we we love. You know, like mm -hmm. we're, we're sitting in our office, no matter how busy we are, we can see the cars pull up and in our little um, showroom front, and you know, it's mm -hmm. someone gets out, and it's like we're just excited, like, oh, what's your name? Here's your order. Pleasure to meet you, and um, you know, because. What's, what's great about our brand is that it is pretty niche. It has like a story behind it. It has a specific vibe and, and kind of, you know, style to it. And so it really takes someone who really sees and appreciates that to kind of go into it. So what we get in return from people who come to us to pick up orders and, and whatnot is someone who's kind of excited already and, and into it. So it really like, there's like this manifestation of, of, of what we're trying to do. And, and when we get to, to see it and feel it in real time, it's something really mm -hmm. special. And, and uh, like I said, our wives probably aren't as big a fans of it because we stay a little later here, um, you know, with a bar here in the boardroom, but, yeah. uh, but our customers love it. And uh, you know, if, if you don't love or take care of your customers, you, yeah, what kind of business do you have? Yeah. yeah. Ladies and gents, appreciate you tuning in to episode 39 of the Spicer Speaking podcast, uh, podcast, rather, just as I further and readily appreciate the time of this week's guests, Ryan Engel and Adam Hawk from Nation Golf. You can find the apparel we're talking about at Nation Golf Co. Don't forget the co. Dot C O M. Fellas, one of the really compelling parts of the Nation Golf story are your personal vocation stories. Uh, you've both given up a lot, very successful, uh, respective careers in other endeavors to both go full-time and uh, to borrow the phrase, all in on what you're doing with Nation Golf. Adam, we'll start with you, longtime former executive producer of the Jim Rome Show based here in Southern California. Let me ask you this, in the I think it's still months since that you have, uh, have left that job uh, to go full time with Nation Golf. Has there been a specific sports story where we woke up and you're like, oh, man, I wish I was on the radio today? Uh, Judd, it's the exact opposite. There are specific sports stories where I'm like, I'm so glad I don't have to <laughs> critically think about that because the sports are it's just, it's just a playground, you know, it's um, the, the uh, impact on your everyday life is so inconsequential that it almost feels silly to have cared about it at least it should be yeah as much <laughs> as i did at one point 
I actually enjoy sports like I used to when I was a kid because it's not a vocation anymore. Uh, there have been plenty of stories, you know, the Aaron Rodgers COVID story, the John Gruden story, the Ben Simmons not playing for the Sixers anymore story, where I'm just like, I'm so glad that I don't have to have a unique original angle on this. I can honestly just push this aside and not care about it and then turn on a game later that night, check in when I want to, check out when I want to. Uh, not only has it been better for me, but it's been better for my family as well because the TV is not constantly dedicated to ESPN and I'm not on my device all day reading these guys' social media feeds. That's not to denigrate anyone that's in the business or wants to be in the business or is still in the business or anyone that I've ever worked with. They are having a great time doing what they're doing. Part of why I left wasn't just because I gravitated so much towards what Ryan was doing, but at the same time, my passion for doing sports radio was just burning out. And uh, I have been at it for 13 or 14 years. And after a while, I'm just like, hey, I don't want to wake up and chase content anymore. I don't want to do that 20 hours out of the day. And tagging out of that, just being like, okay, I'm done has been amazing. As a brief follow-up and perhaps point of empathy, um, as referenced, my former daily radio days, far less of a responsibility, time, commitment level uh, than you had, but it was still a daily pressure of waking up and feeling like I needed to know something about everything. And it wasn't just the time, but you never want to go on live radio and sound like an idiot. You wanted to be informed. And it took me a few weeks, if not a few months, to kind of shed that skin and be like, oh, maybe this is kind of nice. And I was so wrapped up in the feeling the need to know about all these different topics to speak intelligently about them. Sounds like maybe a little bit of the same for you, Adam. Yeah. And first off, I appreciate that you would want to be well prepped because you have the job of informing the listener. And the reason the listener is the listener and the host is the host is because the host is supposed to know more. The only way to know more is to do that prep. And so I totally know what you mean about needing to be informed because it, at the end of the day, is your job to express what you know to the people who don't know. When you get to become one of those people who get to choose when they know and when they don't know, uh, that feeling, it, it comes with a ton of of relief and you find out really quickly that, man, I, I don't really need to know all this <laughs> stuff about what's going on in sports. Life will go on, the world will keep turning and uh, your mental health and your happiness and uh, the mental health and happiness of those people around you who are close to you also goes up as well. Turn it back to Ryan as far as your endeavors, a former professional surfer, world renowned surfboard shaper. Uh, do you still surf, Ryan? Yeah, I mean, not as much as I used to. Uh, obviously, business, life, a new baby. Um, Weight gain. <laughs> you know, just just kind of, you know, everything that I've done to, to let go to some of those um, things in my former career and current, still currently doing it um, kind of just leads you in, into new chapters and directions. And um, the crowd and uh, the... Uh, the culture and the amount of time it takes to be stay committed to something like that is something that has turned me away. And, and, and even more so than that, my love for golf that I've always had has, has now even grown more because of what we're doing. And, and, and just like we were speaking on the company's, you know, motto and whatnot, that changed the way that I viewed the game as well over the years. And so, um, it's like a new love affair that I do have with golf now that, you know, there's been so much of the, like, you know, jockiness and selfishness of it that I've let go. And to go now that I view the game as something to go enjoy with my friends more and uh, the vibe in which we do it and the celebration and being, having a little loose, good, honest fun out there, um, man, you know, to surf is like somewhat of a gamble and sometimes it pays off, but to golf, it's like, you know, we could be like, hey, Judd, next Wednesday, you want to meet it over there? I don't care, uh, rain, wind, or shine, we're going to show up, and I know that I'm going to get a really good experience out of it. And there's something to be said about that in our busy lives as we, you know, um, grow, um, both business and, and socially, that to have something on the books that you know you're going to get, um, you know, something out of is a great bang for your buck. So I don't serve quite as much as I used to. Um, when I do, I still enjoy it. Um, 
because I kind of view it as the same. But, you know, fortunately, my surfboard shaping career led me to a place where I grew some relationships with um, some proprietary global distribution. And I work more with with team prototyping and stuff and and the boards are are distributed globally outside of it so it's more of my design so all the years of hard work from shaping has led to to um unique designs that are now sold around the world which was just the perfect storm for as this was building and our partnership grew that it alleviated the need for me to be on that daily grind of um you know building custom boards for customers anymore and I thank all the customers over the years that supported me. Um, But, you know, this has been an exciting chapter for me to not close the door. I'm still, still um, very invested in that business, but the style in which I do that business day in and day out has given me a lot more time to focus on this. And so to be able to just work on two passions and put the allotted time that we need to put into this um, while still being able to feed my daughter, (laughs) you know, it's, it's uh, I'm, I, there's not a day that go, goes by that I don't feel blessed to walk in these doors and do what we're doing here. Um, and it's just more, more ammo to, to let us to believe that we're doing the right thing. We're on the right path. D- so. Did you watch that show, that HBO show, Ryan, the hundred foot wave? No, I heard about it. Didn't watch that. All right. No. I felt the need to ask somebody that knows about yeah. surfing. <laughs> uh, you probably want, you know, the next time we it. chat. Yeah. 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 It seemed like it was totally insane to me. I just wanted to see if yeah. you shared that impression. I, I know where that place is. Um, I haven't seen the actual thing, but I've there's been footage circling circulating of that particular wave for years, you know. And but those guys are crazy. That's like That's there's right. surfers and then there's big wave guys. It's like a whole different genre. <laughs> That's thing. what I walked away with. A couple yeah. more for you today with the uh, the nation golf uh, gents. A uh, few extensions of, uh, of the brand, which uh, I really respect what you guys are doing. You're not just putting shirts and hats out there. You've, of course, got the, uh, the Fellowship, which is a, a video uh, series that's kind of got a Playboy After Dark uh, swank to it. I'm going to recommend that uh, listeners or viewers, oh, with no women, by the way, uh, <laughs> at least not that I've seen, yeah. um, sure. just mustaches um, yeah. and dudes with long hair. I did catch, I did catch that guy. It was actually... That was pretty funny. Um, <laughs> we've got the uh, the beer, the Swing Lube. It's a Kolsch style uh, beer brand that's uh, made by LA based indie brewing company. You guys gave me a few of those. I took them with me appropriately out on the golf course shortly thereafter. Very tasty beer. Great. And then we've got the tournament, which was the impetus for this entire thing. Now, for the desert listeners, uh, that takes place at historic Indian Wells Country Club. And it's coming back. May is not that that far away. I kind of tried to plant my seed yeah. about maybe getting into this year. I'm not using this medium or this format to try to re-invite myself. But when you go to nationgolfco.com, you can see some videos of past iterations of the event. It looks like a great time. A lot of folks having fun. I think I had the word Bacchanalia in the article. That was <laughs> edited out. But it looks like a great party. I don't know where you're at for spots. I don't know how much you want listeners or viewers to know about this year's event coming back in May. But if you want to drum up more interest, this would be the opportunity. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's a heavy vetting process, you know, and so um, <laughs> you once passed, we can, yeah. <laughs> no. what's great about um, this um, year ahead of us or, you know, annual tournament is uh, it just so happens to be landing on the 50th anniversary of my grandfather's first tournament. And uh, so we're we're shuffling the deck, so to speak. Uh, Over the years, we've done, you know, everyone can choose their own foursomes and sign up as a group. And that's been wonderful. We've had great success. But it's created a demand and an accessibility to be able to join and and be a part of our day. Um, It's made it hard. And so what we're going to do this year is um, follow suit to how my grandpa ran his. And basically you'll be entering as a single and there'll be a player draft based on your A, B, C, or D um, evaluation of your own game. And uh, over the years, I watched that firsthand, how valuable that was. Um, For me, I was able to play in the last seven of my grandfather's tournaments. And each year, 
um, playing with a different group of his friends, getting to know guys. And you talk about to meet and enjoy the fellowship and the camaraderie and all that stuff. That that's basically the direction we want to go. And this year is going to be the first year that we go that direction. So what we're looking forward to is getting a lot more, you know, people who have become fans, customers, um, colleagues of the brand um, to get them out to experience that day and to kind of, you know, for lack of a better term, trim the fat, so to speak. Um, because when you do the, when you sell the foursomes, what, what you end up getting is there's a, there's a handful of groups out there who basically one guy is all in and really gets it and he buys the foursome. And then he invites a couple buddies, whoever he can get to fill those spots. And so you got guys who are there who maybe enjoyed their time there, but they kind of got invited and it wasn't really their thing. Right. Yeah. But going this other direction is going to be something that I know that in the future, as it, you know, transpires, um, that it'll grow into a great experience for everyone. Um, and everyone there will be all in yeah. and, and really want to be there. So to answer your question, that was the long version. The short version is, yeah, we'll send you an invite for sure. <laughs> cool. and, and Judd, if you've ever been to any kind of tournament, whether it's ours or the classic charity scrambles, you know, when you show up with a foursome, you typically drive with them, you play with them, you hang out with them, you eat dinner with them. And by the time the event is all done, you realize that you spent time with the same three people that you showed up with. And there's not a lot of uh, social mixing. And that really is what this brand is all about and what his grandfather was doing. So by making people maybe initially a little more uncomfortable because you're coming as a single and you're going to play with three people and you don't know who it's going to be, that initial uh, discomfort is going to lead to three lifelong friendships over those 18 holes. And then those three people are introducing you to the people that they came with at the dinner. And now the whole thing is mixed. And it's like, I now met a hundred people instead of just a few people and the guys I came with, ultimately you're going to get a better experience out of it and more friendships and the group will feel closer together when you go out with some people that you don't know versus coming with people that you do know and just sticking with them throughout the entire time. A vision of a uh, fun and inclusion wrapped in uh, what sounds like an excellent golf round check uh, folks. I want you to check out the apparel at nation golf co at nationgolfco.com. Ryan Angle, Adam Hawk, appreciate your time. Glad you enjoyed how the article turned out. And uh, thank you for joining the Spicer Speaking Podcast. Let's be in touch, boys. Thank you very much. Thank you, Judd, for having us. It's been a pleasure to get to know you. Thank you for the article, and thanks for inviting us on your podcast. Thanks, boys. Cheers.